in this video we are going to download VS Code and Node.js in this course I will use VS Code as my text editor by the way you can use any text editor but I will use VS Code as my text editor now to download VS Code simply type VS Code download now click on the first link and we have three options we have Windows Ubuntu and make operating system I have Windows and I have already installed VS Code in my system so you just need to download and install VS Code in your system once you install VS Code in your system second we have to download Node.js so simply go to nodejs.org and friends don't worry in this course we will not write the Node.js code we just need NPM NPM stands for Node Package Manager and for NPM we have to install Node.js once we install Node.js it will automatically install NPM as well so just download the LTS version ok I have already installed Node.js once you install Node.js after that open up your command prompt and type node dash dash version so if you have this message that's mean you have installed node.js successfully so i will see you in the next video in this video i am going to show you my vs code setup i have installed some vs code extensions and i want to show you those extensions the first extension i have installed tomorrow theme which is basically this theme if you want my theme then you have to install tomorrow theme just click on this icon now search for tomorrow tomorrow basically the first one so I have installed tomorrow theme the second extension I have installed material icon theme basically this one now friends what basically do material icon theme let's say I want to open up f.js file and VS code as you can see this file has javascript icon this file has javascript icon because I have installed material icon theme so you have to install material icon theme the third extension I have installed Lio server basically this one now friends what basically do Lio server extension this extension basically auto reload our project files in the browser this extension basically auto reload our project files in the browser as we do any change in our project files this will auto reload our files in the browser so you have to install Lio server extension as well the fourth extension I have installed Prettier Prettier basically this one Prettier code formatter now friends this extension will basically auto format our code as we save any file so this will format our file so you have to install prettier extension and once you install after that we have to do one thing simply go to file 
now go to preferences now go to setting now here search bar format on save and you have to check this thing you have to check this thing editor format on save so as we save any file Create your well format our pile. Let's say I want to open up f.js pile and VS Code. Let's say I want to add some extra spaces like so. Now let me save the pile. Yeah, cool, perfect. Let me add here again some extra spaces. Let me save the pile. Yeah. So, friends, just install Prettier extension. So enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question Welcome in this section In this section we will learn the basics of Flexbox By the way if you already know Flexbox then you can skip this section but if you don't know Flexbox then you should need to watch this section so i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to talk about css flexbox so the first question is what is flexbox css flexbox layout allows you to easily format html in other words, with the help of Flexbox, we can create rows and columns very easily. And we can align columns inside of rows vertically and horizontally very easily. In this diagram, as you can see, we have six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. In each row we have three columns in the first row we have three columns and these columns are placed at the beginning of this row so we can create this kind of layout very easily with the help of CSS flex box in the second row again we have three columns and these columns are placed at the end of this row in the third row we have again three columns and these are placed at the center of this row so friends in this section I will show you how to create these kind of layouts very easily with the help of CSS flexbox so I will see you in the next video in this video I will show you flexbox practically and first of all we have to create a new folder so go to file click on open folder and I want to create a new folder on desktop so click on desktop and up here as you can see we have new folder so click on new folder and the folder name all flex box like so now click on select folder and we have flex box folder ok now inside of this folder I want to create a new file so new file and the file name will index dot HTML inside of this file I want to create a simple HTML template so what we need to do simply type HTML colon file and press the tab key from the keyboard like so second I am going to create style.css file so new file 
style dot css now i you want to link this file below below the title so below the title i am going to add here link and press the tab key from the keyboard like so inside the href i am going to add here style dot css inside the body i am going to create a row class so dot row and press the tab key from the keyboard inside of this row i you want to create three columns so dot column and press the tab key and we will have column 1 now i am going to copy this column paste it here again in the second column we will have column 2 in the third column we will have column 3 now friends in flex box we have two main things flex container and flex items so what is flex container and what are flex items and this html file a is you can see we have this parent class we have this parent class inside of this parent we have three childs child 1 child 2 and child 3 so this row is a parent class this row is a parent class so this is a flex container this is a flex container and these are flex items these are flex items understand now i you want to target row class inside of style dot css so let me add here dot row and we will have background red and after i am going to target column class so we will have dot column and inside of this class we will have background orange width 150 pixels height 150 pixels margin 20 pixels now go to index.html and i you want to open up this file in the browser and we have already installed the lio server extension so just inside the html file right click and as you can see we have open with lio server option so just click on open with lio server and as you can see we have items in this direction but i you want to keep these items in a row direction i you want to place these items in a row direction so what we need to do simply go to your style dot css inside the row class i am going to add here display just flex save the file go back to the browser as you can see we have items in a row direction we have items in a row direction so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about the flex direction property with the help of flex direction property we can change the direction of flex container 
simply go to style.css file inside of row class I am going to add here flex direction and a row is the default value row is the default value simply save the file go back to the browser as you can see we have same output we have same output because row is the default value now go back to style.css file and if I add here row dash reverse save the file go back to the browser now as you can see we have items in a reverse direction we have items in a reverse direction first of all we have column 3 after we have column 2 and finally we have column 1 and these columns are start from the right direction understand now if I add here columns just column save the file go back to the browser now as you can see we have items in a column direction and if I add here column dash reverse save the file go back to the browser we have items in a reverse direction first of all we have column 3 after we have column 2 and finally we have column 1 so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about flex basis property flex basis property we use instead width property simply go to VS code and first of all I am going to delete flex direction and instead width I am going to use flex basis like so save the file go back to the browser and as you can see we have same output we have same output so flex basis property we use instead width property understand so enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about flex grow property with the help of flex grow property we can distribute the free available space between columns and this row as you can see we have this free available space and I want to distribute this free available space between these columns so go to style.css file inside of this class I am going to add here flex dash grow colon 1 so 1 basically means distribute the free available space between columns equally 1 basically means distribute the free available space between columns equally let me save the file go back to the browser yeah exactly fine now let's say I want the first column will have two times space according to column 2 and column 3 so what we need to do first of all we have to target the first column inside of style.css file so simply I am going to add here dot column colon init dash child parenthesis one curly braces so this code will target the first child basically this one and if I add here 
two value then this code will target the second child basically this one but I need the first child so let me add here one value and we will have flex dash grow colon 2 so the first column will have two times space according to column 2 and 3 let me save the file go back to the browser yeah exactly fine this column has two times space according to column 2 and column 3 if I add here 3 then this column will have three times space according to column 2 and 3 let me save the file go back to the browser yeah exactly fine so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question so i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to talk about flex shrink property flex shrink property is the opposite of flex grow property with the help of flex shrink property we can shrink the flex items simply go to style.css file inside the first column we have flex grow instead grow I am going to add here shrink so here flex shrink basically means if we don't have free available space in a row and we shrink the browser window in that case shrink this first column three times according to column two and three simply go back to the browser and to show you flex shrink clearly simply I am going to do here inspect and now I am going to click on this mobile icon now friends here if I shrink the browser window like this just see here just see the first column as you can see the first column has three times less space according to column 2 and 3 first column has three times less space according to column 2 and column 3 yeah exactly fine okay so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about flex property flex property basically combine three flex box properties in a single line and all of them is flex grow flex shrink and flex bases simply go to style dot css file first of all i am going to delete this class now inside the column class i am going to add here flex colon and it basically takes three values first of all we have to add value for flex grow so let's say one second we have to add value for flex shrink so let's say again one which is the default value and third we have to add value for flex bases so up here we have 150 pixels let me copy paste it here now I am going to delete flex grow and flex bases so this first value means flex grow second value means 
flex shrink and this third value means flex basis let me save the file go back to the browser yeah exactly fine now let's say if I want to use only flex grow property and that case we can delete flex basis and flex shrink like so so this one basically means flex grow let me save the file go back to the browser yeah exactly fine so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about order property with the help of order property we can change the order of flex items so go to style.css file and first of all I am going to target first column second column and third column so go to style.css and I am going to add here dot column colon nth this child one now I am going to copy this class paste it here in the second class we will have two let me paste one more time and we will have three so this three basically means third column and this two means second column and this one means the first column so inside the first column I am going to add here order 3 inside the second column I am going to add here order 2 inside the third column I am going to add here order order 1 so inside the first column we have order 3 so this code basically means the first column will take the position of third column so this 3 means third column so first column will take the position of third column and this code means the second column will take their own position the second column will take their own position and finally we have third column so third column will take the position of first column so this one basically means first column so third column will take the position of first column save the file go back to the browser so as you can see first of all we have column 3 after we have column 2 and finally we have column 1 understand so with the help of order property we can change the order of flex items understand so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about flex wrap property first of all inside this row I am going to add one more column so let me copy this column paste it here we will have column 4 now go to style.css file and I am going to delete these classes and also I am going to delete margin 20 ok and we will have width r flex basis 25% so basically we have four columns and each column has 25% width so 25 multiply by 4 equal to 
परसेंट अंडरस्टैंड सो सिंपली दीज कॉलम्स विल कवर वन हंड्रेड परसेंट वेट सेव द फाइल गो बैक टू द ब्राउजर या एग्जैक्टली फाइन नाउ फ्रेंड्स इन दिस रो वी डोंट हैव एनी फ्री अवेलेबल स्पेस बट एफ आई एड हेयर वन मोर कॉलम लेट मी कॉपी पेस्ट इट हेयर वी विल हैव कॉलम फाइव नाउ फ्रेंड्स फ्लेक्स बॉक्स विल स्टिल एडजस्ट दिस फिफ्थ कॉलम इन अ सिंगल रो एंड आई डोंट वॉन्ट दैट लेट मी सेव द फाइल go back to the browser yeah exactly fine but i want if we don't have free available space in a row then move the fifth column to the next row then move the fifth column to the next row so I'll simply go to style.css file inside the row class i am going to add here flex wrap and the default value is no wrap but i am going to add here wrap value so wrap basically means if we don't have free available space in a row then move the fifth the fifth column to the next row understand let me save the file go back to the browser yeah exactly fine in the second row we have column file in the second row we have column file so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to align columns horizontally so go to index.html first of all I want to keep only three columns. So let me delete these two columns and I go to style dot css. Now I am going to delete flex one. We will have margin twenty pixels. After we will have flex bases one fifty. pixels go back to the browser now inside this row i want to align these columns horizontally so inside the row class i am going to add justify content and it takes different values first of all i am going to add flex dash start which is the default value let me save the file go back to the browser nothing changed because flex start is the default value second i am going to add here flex end save the file go back to the browser so as you can see items are aligned at the end now i am going to add here center save the file go back to the browser and columns are aligned at the center okay now if i add here space between so uh, we will have space between the columns like so and if i add here space around so around the items we will have space like so and if i add here space evenly so between and around the items we will have equal space like so so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question so i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to align these columns vertically first of all inside the row class we have to add height let's say 600 pixels save the file 
go back to the browser now inside this container I want to align these columns vertically so simply I am going to add here align items and the possible values are flex dash start which is default value save the file go back to the browser yeah nothing changed if I add here center save the file go back to the browser items are aligned at the center and if I add here flex dash end save the file items are aligned at the end so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question welcome in this section in this section we will learn everything about SAS like what is SAS what are the basic features of SAS and how to compile the SAS code into power CSS so we will learn these all of basic things in this section so I will see you in the next video in this section we are going to learn the basics of SAS so the first question is what is SAS SAS stands for Cytectically Awesome Style Sheet in SAS we can use variables nested rules functions loops if else statements and much more features in plain CSS we can use only variables and the rest of features we cannot use in plain CSS and friends SAS is very very reusable we can reuse some piece of SAS code and different files so that's why we have to use SAS instead plain CSS and browser don't know the SAS code browser don't know the SAS code so what we will do simply we will compile our SAS code to favor CSS and for that we will use the NVM package for that we will use the NVM package so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to create a new folder for SAS so go to file now click on open folder and I will create my new folder on desktop you can create your folder anywhere so simply new folder and the folder name will learn SAS create new folder now select folder now in the main folder I am going to create a new file and the file name will index.html in this file I am going to create simple HTML boiler flat so simply HTML colon file now press the tab key from the keyboard yeah and the title should be Laran SAS now I am going to create another new file and the file name will f.scss now friends right now just add scss extension right now just add scss extension and later in this course I will explain you the basic difference between SAS and SCSS but right now just add SCSS extension so let me create the file 
now in this file we will have the source code in this file we will have the source code now we have to create another a new file and the file name will f dot css in this file we will have the compiled css code and this file we will have the final compiled css code so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to install sas package with the help of sas package we can compile our sas or scss code to power css so simply go to this website saslang.com and this is an official website of sas now click on install let me scroll down scroll down now as you can see we have to install sas package through npm so open up your command prompt now let me type npm install after the install we have dash g so dash g stands for global i want to install sas package globally so once we install sas package globally after that we will access sas package throughout our system so that's why we have to install sas package globally so let me add dash g sas now press the enter key from the keyboard just wait a moment yeah the package has been installed now go to vs code now i want to compile some basics sas or scss code to power css so i go to app.scss file now let me add dollar red colon red now friends don't worry about this code i will explain you in this section how we can create sas or scss variables but for now just add dollar red colon red so this is a sas variable and this red variable has red value now let me add body selector inside there we will have background and background property will has dollar red variable so let me add dollar red and dollar red variable has red value now i want to compile this sas or scss code to power css so go back to command prompt now inside the command prompt we have to navigate learn sas folder so what we need to do let me add cd cd stands for change directory so cd desktop now on desktop i have learn sas folder so again cd learn sas yeah perfect now we have to add sas which is the package name after that we have to add the input file name so we have f dot scss file so let me add space f dot scss space and finally we have to add the output file name so we have f dot css and this file we will have the compiled css code so let me add app dot css now simply press the enter key from the keyboard yeah perfect now as you can see inside app dot css file we have this compiled code we have this compiled code understand 
so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to run this command from package.json file package.json file as a configuration file we can define scripts and package.json file and it also keep the list of npm dependencies so now what we need to do first of all we have to create the package.json file so simply we have to type npm and net now press the enter key from the keyboard now this will ask some questions and the first question is package name and by default we have learn sas which is the folder name so default name is fine so press the enter key now we have version so default version is fine press the enter key now we have description so let's say learn sas r s c s s from scratch enter now we have entry point so default name is fine now we have test command so enter 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 now we have author so let's say in my case shakil khan by the way you can add your own name enter license default is fine is this okay yes now we have package.json file as you can see inside this file we have json object inside this object we have we have scripts we have scripts key inside scripts we have test we have test key so instead test i am going to add i am going to add compile dash sas by the way you can add abc xyz but in my case compile dash sas and value should be let me delete this value and value should be let me show you basically this thing so simply we have to add sas which is the package name after we have to add the input file name so app.scss now app.css so this command basically means compile the code of this file and place the compiled code in this file i mean inside app.css so let me save the file and finally we have to run this script compile dash sas so simply go back to command prompt now let me add cls cls stands for clear command prompt yes now we have to add npm run after the run we have to add the script name which is compile dash sas so let me add compile dash sas press the enter key yeah fine now let's say if i change red color to orange now we have to rerun this script again so let me add npm run compile dash sas now simply go to app.css and we have orange we have orange color now friends we have one issue and the issue is let's say if i change orange to green so each time if we change this file so each time we have to rerun we have to rerun this script and this is not a good approach this is not a good approach so now what we need to do simply go to package.json file inside this command we have to add space 
dash dash watch plag so now what we'll do dash dash watch plag each time if we change any scss file each time if we change any scss file in that case dash dash watch will basically rerun the script dash dash watch will rerun this script now let me show you simply save the file now let me add cls npm run compile dash sas now as you can see sas is watching for changes sas is watching for changes so for example instead green api add indigo save the file now go to app.css and if we have indigo if i add here yellow save the file now we have yellow we have yellow fine now i want to delete this file f.css dot map basically we don't need this file so i want to delete this file so what we need to do go back to package.json after dash dash watch we have to add space dash dash no dash source dash map and first of all we have to delete this file manually let me delete now first of all we have to stop the script so simply press control c from the keyboard yes cls now again npm run compile dash sas yeah and we have no more app.css dot map file so for example if i add here again red save the file now we have red background we have background red so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about sas or scss variables so the first question is what are variables variables are containers variables are containers which basically store values in the computer memory now sas or scss variables start from dollar sign sas or scss variables start from dollar sign so first of all we have to add dollar sign so simply dollar sign after the dollar sign we can add any name so let's say my color you can add my dash color or my underscore color you can add just color or bg so let's say i'm going to add box dash color colon after the colon you can add any css valid value so let's say red you can add 20 pixels or plex or plex dash int or center you can put any css valid value so let's say in my case box color so let's say indigo now let me delete body selector now we can reuse this variable throughout all scss files we can reuse this variable throughout all scss or sas files so let's say i am going to target a class and the class name let's say dot box one and don't worry we don't have box one class but just an example we have to target any class okay so box one background 
now i want to use this variable because in this variable we have indigo color so let me add dollar dollar box dash color now let me add dot box to background background dollar box dash color box 3 background box color let me save the file now simply go to f dot css and we have box one and this has background indigo after that we have box two and this has background indigo now let's say i want to change the background color so what we need to do simply we have to change only only this value so let's say orange save the file now we have orange backgrounds we have orange backgrounds let's say if i want to choose green save the file now we have green backgrounds understand so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about debug rule in sas we have different rules as you can see we have use rule power word import mixin include function we have alerts of rules and all rules start from at the rate sign all rules start from at the rate sign so in this video we are going to talk about debug rule what is debug and when to use debug rule if you have worked in javascript language then you must have seen console.log so debug rule is same like console.log let's say if you want to output the value of a variable or expression in the command prompt so in that case you can use debug rule simply go to vs code first of all i am going to create a new variable so let's say dollar number colon so let's say file value now i want to output the value of this variable and this black screen so simply we have to use debug rule so we have to add at the rate sign because all rules start from at the rate sign now we have to add the rule name so simply debug keyword after the debug keyword we have to add the variable name so we have dollar number so dollar number save the file go to command prompt now as you can see we have debug file we have debug file now let's say i want to create one more variable dollar sum colon 10 plus 10 so 10 plus 10 equal to 20 so now in this sum variable we have 20 value now i you want to output the sum of this variable and this black screen so what we need to do again we have to use debug rule so at the rate debug debug dollar sum save the pile go back to command prompt and we have debug 20 we have debug 20 now let's say if you want to output a message along with along with this sum so what we need to do simply we have to use single quotes or double quotes and the sum sum as 
now i want to output this dynamic variable so what we need to do first of all we have to add hash curly braces inside the curly braces we have to add dollar sum save the file now go back to command prompt and we have the sum is 20 the sum is 20 let's say if i add here 10 plus 30 save the file go back to command prompt now we have the sum as 40 the sum as 40 so simply we can use a debug rule for debugging if you want to output the value of a variable or expression so in that case we can use a debug rule we can use a debug rule so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about sas modules modules basically means we can divide our sas code and different modules we can divide our sas code and different modules let's say in the html file app we have new bar section and header section so i can create one sas file for new bar and second sas file for header section so simply we can divide our sas code and different modules now I want to create two SAS modules. So we have to create a new file and make sure SAS modules start from underscore. SAS modules start from underscore. Underscore basically means underscore will tell to SAS compiler that this is a SAS module. Understand? So first of all underscore after the underscore we can add any name we can add any valid name so let's say new bar dot scss now again new file underscore header dot scss now go to new bar dot scss now i'm going to target new selector and this will has background orange color white now go to header dot scss now i am going to target header selector and this will has background indigo color should be white now i want to access these two modules inside app.scss file i want to access these two modules inside app.scss file so what we need to do simply we have to use sas rule and the rule name is use the rule name is use so up here first of all i am going to add at the rate sign because all rules start from at the rate sign after at the rate we have to add use keyword we have to add use keyword after the use keyword we can add double quotes or single quotes now semicolon inside the quotes we have to add the module name we have to add the module name but make sure we have to add the module name without underscore and without file extension we have to add the module name without underscore and without the file extension because sas is very very smart sas is very very smart so inside the codes i want to add first of all i want to access newbar dot scss so we have to add only newbar we have to add only newbar 
and second I want to access header dot scss so again at the rate use header semicolon save the file now go to app dot css now as you can see first of all we have name and below that we have header we have header so with the help of modules we can divide our source code and different modules in this video we are going to talk about what is the basic difference between SAS and SCSS. For all files, I have used the SCSS extension. As you can see, for all files, I have used the SCSS extension. Let's say I want to rename this file app.scss. So let me rename and we have to add app.sas instead scss we have to use sas extension now in this file instead curly braces we have to use indentations instead curly braces we have to use indentations indentations basically means some empty spaces and SAS extension basically using indentations instead curly braces so we have to delete this curly brace and also this one now you see between box one and background we have we have empty spaces we have some empty spaces so instead curly braces we have to use indentations and indentations basically means some empty spaces but in this course i will use the scss extension because sas syntax is slightly confusing sas syntax is slightly confusing so that's why i will use the scss extension instead sas extension understand so enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to access sas variables in sas modules so first of all i am going to create a new module so new file and the module name will be underscore variables dot scss now i am going to create some sas variables so dollar orange colon orange dollar indigo colon indigo dollar white colon white now i want to access these variables inside underscore header dot scss module so what we need to do first of all inside this module we have to access variables module so simply up here i am going to add at the rate use keyword because i want to access a module now we have to add single codes or double codes semicolon inside the codes we have to add the module name so we have variables module let me add variables and make sure we have to add the module name without underscore and without the file extension now from variables module i want to access dollar indigo variable because this variable has indigo color and i want to access dollar indigo variable from this module so what we need to do instead indigo i am going to add dollar indigo and this code will not going to work let me show you simply go to app.css now as you can see we have an error we have an error and the reason is dollar indigo 
variable basically need a name space dollar indigo variable basically need a name space and this variables is a name space for dollar indigo this variables is a name space for dollar indigo so before dollar indigo we have to add variables dot dollar indigo let me save the file go back to app.css and we have indigo we have indigo app we have path look like let's say app we have variables folder inside there app we have app we have header folder inside there app we have colors so our namespace will be this last thing our namespace will be this last thing i mean colors so instead variables we have to add colors understand app we have path look like this let's say variables folder and set their app we have header file so our namespace will be this last thing so instead colors we have to add header but right now we have we have this path variables so our namespace is basically variables understand now let's say i want to rename variables namespace so what we need to do after the codes we have to add s keyword after the s keyword we can add any name so let's say my colors so now instead variables we have to add my colors let me save the file go back to app.css and we have indigo we have indigo now let's say i want to delete the name space let's say i want to delete the name space so instead my colors we have to add a static sign we have to add a static sign so a static sign will basically delete the name space so now let me delete my colors we have to add only dollar indigo let me save the file go back to app.css and we have indigo we have indigo now i want to access dollar white so what i will do before white we have to add dollar let me save the file go to app.css and we have white we have white now go to newbar.scss now inside this module i want to access i want to access dollar orange variable and dollar white so what we need to do first of all up here we have to add at the red use single quotes or double quotes semicolon we have to add the module name so we have variables now i want to delete the name space so we have to add s keyword a static sign now instead orange we have to add dollar orange and right here we have to add dollar white let me save the file now go back to app.css now as you can see we have orange below that we have white we have white so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about sas nesting nesting basically means we can nest childs inside the parent we can nest childs inside the parent so go to index.html inside the body i am going to create ul sorry nav tag inside the nav tag we will have ul 
so this ul is the child of this nav tag this ul is the child of this nav tag inside the ul we will have li so this li is the child of this ul inside the li we will have a tag and this will has home title so this a tag is a child of this li understand now simply go to app.css now let me delete this code now simply i'm going to target new selector so simply new this will has width 100 percent height 80 pixels background background orange line height 80 pixels now inside now we have we have ul so between these two curly braces we can target ul like so inside these two curly braces we can target ul like this because this ul is a child of this new so ul well has list type should be none now inside ul we have we have li so between these two curly braces i'm going to target li like so li will has display in line block now inside li we have we have a tag so between these two curly braces i am going to target a like so and a will has text decoration should be none color should be white now simply go to app.css now as you can see first of all we have nav tag and this basically has width height background line height below that we have nav inside nav we have ul and ul has list style none after that we have nav ul li and finally we have nav ul li a and a tag basically has this code understand now simply go back to index.html and below the title i'm going to add i'm going to add link tag and we have to link app.css now i'm going to open up the live server yeah perfect perfect we have this orange we have this orange nav bar we have this nav bar so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about bim methodology bim stands for block element modifier with the help of bim methodology we can create clear relation between parent and child classes understand to this new tag i am going to assign a class so simply class equal to new instead new you can add a b c whatever you want but in my case new so this new basically represent this new tag inside the new tag we have ul 
and this will has class equal to new so this new basically represent the parent class name which is this one after the new we have to add underscore underscore instead double underscores you can add single underscore as well but in my case i am going to add double underscores after the underscores we have to add ul instead ul you can add abc whatever you want but in my case ul so this ul basically represent this ul tag now friends as you can see between this new and ul we have clear relation because this new represent the parent class name which is this new understand now inside ul we have li and this will has class equal to new underscore underscore ul so new underscore underscore ul represent the parent class name which is this one after the ul i am going to add underscore underscore li so li basically represent li tag inside li we have anchor tag and this will has class equal to new underscore underscore ul underscore underscore li so this class represent the parent class name which is this one now we have to add underscore underscore a so a represent the anchor tag understand now let me explain you what is block what are elements and what are modifiers in this code we have only one parent tag in this code we have only one parent and that is new that is new so this new is basically block this new is basically block inside this block we have three we have three childs inside this new we have three nested childs so these are elements these are elements i mean ul li and anchor tag these are elements now what are modifiers so simply i am going to copy this li along with anchor tag let me copy paste that now i want this anchor tag will has red color and this anchor tag will has indigo color now to do this simply we have to use modifiers so what we need to do this anchor tag will has another class so let me copy this class let me add a space paste the class now to add modifier we have to add dash dash after the dash dash we can add any name so let's say red so this red is a modifier this red is a modifier understand now this anchor tag will has indigo color so let me copy this class let me add a space paste the class now we have to add dash dash and go and go so dash dash red and dash dash indigo these are modifiers these are modifiers understand now simply we have to target new class inside app dot scss so instead now we have to add dot new class instead the new class we have new underscore underscore ul so 
let me add here dot new underscore underscore u l now instead this parent class instead dot new we can add and sign we can add and sign so and sign basically represent the parent class name which is dot new inside the ul we have we have we have li so let me add here dot new underscore underscore ul underscore underscore li so instead this parent class i am going to add an sign so an sign basically represent the parent class name which is dot new underscore underscore ul instead the li we have anchor we have anchor tag basically this one so let me add here dot new underscore underscore ul underscore underscore li underscore underscore a now instead of this parent class i am going to add and sign like so and finally we have to target modifiers so we have dash dash red and dash dash indigo so what we need to do inside inside a i am going to add here simply dot new underscore underscore ul underscore underscore li underscore underscore a dash dash red so now instead instead this parent class i am going to add n and this will has color red now we have dash dash indigo so simply and dash dash indigo color should be indigo indigo like so now let me save the file now go to the browser as you can see we have two links let me change the text let's say let's see contact let me show the file go back to the browser so home basically has red color and contact basically has indigo color understand so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about sas list in sas list we can keep more than one values same as javascript arrays now let me show you sas list practically simply i am going to delete this code now we have to create a variable so let's say dollar colors colon dollar colors variable will keep our list after the colon i am going to add parentheses semicolon like so inside the parentheses we can define different values let's say 10 pixels comma 11 pixels comma 12 pixels comma 13 pixels and so on so we can keep more than one values in sas list in this video instead pixels i am going to keep some colors so simply i am going to delete these values and i gonna add orange orange as a string value so we have to wrap orange in single codes or double codes let me use single codes like so now simply comma 
green comma red comma blue now i want to output dollar colors list so we can use a debug rule let me add at the rate debug dollar colors save the file go to command prompt and we have orange green red and blue now i want to loop dollar colors list i want to loop dollar colors list so we can use sas each loop we can use each loop let me delete this line and first of all we have to add at the rate each keyword and i want to loop dollar colors list so we have to add dollar colors curly braces from this list i want to access individual value i mean orange green red and blue now to access individual value from this list simply before dollar colors we have to add dollar color instead dollar color you can add dollar a dollar b dollar c whatever you want but in my case dollar color now we have to add n keyword we have to add n keyword so each will loop dollar colors list and we can access individual value through dollar color let me show you simply at the rate debug dollar color save the file go back to command prompt and we have orange green red and blue now i want to create some dynamic classes like color dash after the dash i want to append orange green red and blue so what we need to do we can access these values through dollar color so after the dash we have to append dollar color variable so what we need to do simply we have to add hash curly braces inside the curly braces we have to add dollar color curly braces now simply add background dollar color save the file now go to app.css and we have color orange color green color red now as you can see around orange we have double quotes we have double quotes and i want to delete these quotes so what we need to do go back to app.css instead dollar color we have to add hash sign and we have to wrap dollar color in curly braces like so so let me save the file go back to app.css and we have orange green red and blue so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about sas maps maps look like lists but they keep data and key value pairs maps keep data and key value pairs same as javascript objects now let me show you maps practically simply i am going to create a variable let's say dollar pound weights colon parenthesis semicolon inside the parenthesis first of all we have to add the key name 
so let's say normal you can add abc whatever you want but in my case normal normal is a string value so we have to wrap normal and single quotes or double quotes let me use single quotes like so now we have to add colon after the colon we have to add value for this key so let's say 400 comma single quotes bold colon 500 comma extra bold colon 600 now i want to access values from this map so we can use sas built-in function and the function name is map dash get first of all we have to add at the rate debug and the function name is map dash get and this function takes two parameters first of all we have to add the map name so we have this map let me copy paste that and second we can add the key name let's say i want to access 500 value so for this value we have bold key so right here we have to add single codes or double codes inside the codes we have to add bold key let me copy paste that now i am going to delete this line now simply save the file go to command prompt and we have 500 we have 500 let's say i want to access 400 so for this value we have normal key let me copy and paste that right here save the file go back to command prompt and we have 400 understand now i want to loop this map so we can use each loop let me add here each key wall and i want to loop this map let me copy paste that curly braces after the each key wall i am going to add a variable let's say dollar font n key wall so through dollar font we can access key and value we can access key and value let me show you debug dollar font save the file go back to command prompt and we have normal 400 bold 500 extra bold 600 but i want to access key and values separately so what we need to do let me delete font and we have to add dollar key comma dollar value instead of value you can add a b c whatever you want but in my case value so key will keep all keys which is normal bold extra bold and dollar value will keep all values which is 400 500 and 600 understand so let's say i am going to add single codes your key is colon hash curly braces dollar key let me add debug again your value is colon hash curly braces dollar value save the file go back to command prompt and we have your key as normal your value as 400 
now i want to create some dynamic classes i want to create some dynamic classes so let's say dot point dash after the dash i want to append i want to append normal bold and extra bold so we can access keys from dollar key so let me add hash curly braces dollar key curly braces point weight property and this will has dollar value save the file now go to app.css and we have port normal port bold font extra bold so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question thank you in this video we are going to talk about sas for loop let's say if you want to run a loop up to a specific point in that case you can use for loop simply i am going to create two variables let's say dollar start loop colon 1 so one basically means loop will start from 1 and second we will have end loop colon 20 you can add 10 30 40 whatever you want but in my case 20 so 20 basically means i want to run my loop 20 times i want to run my loop 20 times and now we have to add at the rate for keyword after the for keyword we have to add the iteration variable so let's say dollar i you can add dollar a dollar b dollar c whatever you want but in my case dollar i so this variable will increment in each iteration this variable will increment in each iteration after the iteration variable we have to add from keyword so from basically means our loop will start from dollar start loop and now we have to add through keyword after the through we have to add dollar end loop so our loop will start from this number and it will goes up to this number understand now simply i am going to add debug dollar i save the file go to command prompt and we have 1 2 3 4 5 and so on now let's say i want to create some dynamic classes so simply dot point size dash after the dash i want to append i want to append numbers so what we need to do simply we have to append dollar i variable so let me add hash curly braces let's say if i add variable like dollar i so sas will treat this variable as a string sas will treat this variable as a string so what we need to do simply we have to add hash curly braces and set there we have to add dollar i like so and we will have font size property and this will has this will has what dollar i after the i we have to append fixel unit we have to append fixel unit so what we need to do again we have to use hash curly braces dollar i after the curly brace we can append px we can append px let me save the file now go to 
ape dot css and we have font size one one pixel font size two two pixels font size three three pixels and so on so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about if else statements with the help of if else statements we can check the conditions if the condition is true then do something otherwise do something else so simply i am going to delete this code to make file clear now i am going to create a variable for example dollar circle and this will has a true value now i am going to target a class for example dot header and this will has width 200 pixels height 200 pixels now i am going to check dollar circle variable if this variable has true value then i will use border radius otherwise i will not use border radius so simply we have to use if statement below the height i am going to add at the rate first of all we have to add at the rate f keyword after the f keyword we can add the condition so i am going to add dollar circle variable curly braces so if dollar circle variable has true value then simply use border radius 50 percent save the file go to app dot css and we have header class inside there we have border radius 50 percent because circle variable has true value we can also add the else statement so right here let me add at the rate else keyword curly braces now up here i am going to add pulse value so if dollar circle variable doesn't have true value then go to else then go to else and simply use border radius zero save the file go back to app.css and we have zero we have border radius zero because circle variable has false value so that's why we have border radius zero we can also check string values up here i am going to add single codes normal value now i am going to check if dollar circle variable is equal to single codes normal then simply use border radius 10 pixels otherwise go to also and the else statement i am going to add else if i am going to check another if dollar circle equal to equal to radius then simply use border radius 50 percent otherwise go to else right here go to else and simply use border radius zero so if these two condition are not true if these two conditions are not true then go to else and simply use border radius zero so right now we have normal value we have normal value so this statement will run because dollar circle variable has normal value so simply go to app.css and we have border radius 10 pixels 
now if I add here radius so sorry radius like so so now this condition will run because in the circle variable we have we have a radius value so simply go to f.css and we have 50 percent we have 50 percent let's say if i add here abc so now these two conditions are false these two conditions are false so we will have border radius zero because in the circle variable we have a b c so go to app.css and we have border radius zero understand so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about functions so the first question is what is function in a function we can put some piece of logic and after we can reuse that function in different places so that's why functions are very very useful functions are very very useful in this video i am going to create a grid system normally in a grid system in a single row maximum we have 12 columns so i will create 12 columns and for that i will use a function now to create a function first of all we have to add at the rate function keyword after the function keyword we can add the function name the function name is totally up to you so in my case grade parentheses curly braces this function will receive only one parameter so inside the parentheses i am going to add dollar number by the way you can add dollar a dollar b dollar c whatever you want but in my case dollar number sorry number now this function should return something so simply we have to add at the rate return keyword now we can return string value or number or boolean values but in my case i am going to do some calculation basic basically i want to create some columns and for that i will use a formula and the formula is 100 percent divided by 12 because in a single row maximum we will have 12 columns so that's why we have to divide 100 on 12 now simply multiply by dollar number basically this thing so dollar number could be 1 2 3 4 up to 12 understand now simply right here i am going to create a class for example dot call dash one so call dash one basically means i want to take only one column from 12 okay and this way this will has width colon now simply we have to call a grid function so let me call grid now i am going to pass only one so one basically means i want to take only one column so simply save the file go to app.css and we have call dash one and set there we have this value we have this value now simply go to command prompt and we have recommendation deprecation warning using divide by for division is deprecated and will be removed and dart sas this version and the recommendation method is this one okay so simply instead instead go back to app.scss instead this method simply we have to use 
a SaaS built-in module. So what we need to do first of all, up here I am going to import something from SaaS. So simply at the rate, use keyword single quotes or double quotes SaaS colon, and I want to access math module. I want to access math module from SaaS. Understand? Math is a built-in SaaS module. Now simply instead this code we have to add math basically this math from math I am going to access div function so div basically means division div basically means division so I want to divide 100 percent comma 12 okay so divide 100 on 12 multiply by multiply by dollar number save the file go to app.css and we have basically an error let me check sorry we have the spelling issue we have to add one more s like so save the file go back to app.css and we have same output we have same output now simply I am going to create one more class let me copy this class paste that we will have call dash 2 and here also to save the file go to f.css and we have this class and that basically has this value this value let me paste one more time call dash 3 we have to pass 3 here as well now simply call dash 4 grid 4 save the file go back to app.css and we have 4 columns we have 4 columns understand so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question so for now thank you thank you so much and i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to talk about sas extends with the help of extends we can inherit css classes we can inherit css classes let me show you first of all i am going to delete this code now simply I am going to create a class for example dot alert and this will has padding 15 pixels font size 14 pixels color should be white now I am going to create another class dot alert dash danger inside this class I want to inherit alert class inside alert dash danger I want to inherit alert class so what we need to do inside alert dash danger we have to add at the rate extend extend keyword after the extend keyword we have to add dot alert basically I want to inherit this class so we have to add dot alert like so now inside alert dash danger we can add additional properties we can add additional properties so let me add background red save the file go to app.css as you can see alert and alert dash danger have these same properties below that we have alert danger inside there we have this unique property we have this unique property now go to index.html below the nav tag i am going to create a class and the class name will alert dash danger and this will has a message sorry you are not authorized like so 
now i am going to open up the live server like so so as you can see we have this alert danger danger message understand now we can inherit more than one classes we can inherit more than one classes let's say i am going to create one more class dot alert dash radius like so and this will has border radius 5 pixels now i want to inherit alert radius class as well inside alert dash danger so what we need to do after dot alert we have to add comma dot alert dash radius like so save the file go back to the browser as you can see we have this slightly radius we have this slightly radius understand now go back to index.html i am going to create another class alert dash success and this will has a message your account has been created save the file go to app.scss let me target alert dash success now i want to inherit these two classes so what we need to do let me copy this line paste that inside here and this will has background green like so save the file go back to the browser and we have this green alert message understand now friends simply go to ape.css inside this file we have alert and alert radius class but i want to ignore these two classes inside ape dot css i mean i want to delete these two classes from this file and i want to use these two classes only for inheritance i want to use these two classes only for inheritance so what we need to do instead dot we have to use percentage sign like so let me add here as well and here also percentage here also save the file now go to app.css as you can see we don't have alert and alert radius class anymore inside this file if i go to the browser so we have same output we have same output so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about sas mixins mixins and extends both are the same things the only difference is mixin functions except parameters mixin functions except parameters now let me show you simply i am going to delete these two things now i am going to create a mixin function so first of all we have to add at the rate mixin keyword after the mixin keyword we have to add the mixin function name name is totally up to you so in my case alert parenthesis curly braces this function will takes two parameters so let's say dollar bg you can add dollar a dollar b dollar c whatever you want but in my case dollar bg second we will have dollar radius like so inside the mixin we will have background 
colon dollar bg so in this variable we will have a color like green red orange like so understand after we will have border radius and this will has dollar radius like so understand now we will have color should be white padding 15 pixels font size 14 pixels now inside alert dash danger i am going to call alert mixing so let me delete these two lines and first of all we have to add at the rate include keyword because i want to access a mixing so we have to add include keyword after the include keyword we have to add the mixing name so we have alert like so now i am going to pass a color as you can see we have dollar bg so we have to pass a color let's say red comma second we have to pass radius so let's say four pixels inside alert dash success again i am going to call alert mixing so let me delete these two lines we have to add include alert we will have green color after that we will have eight pixels radius save the file go to the browser as you can see we have same output we have same output so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question welcome in this section in this section we will do the project basic setting like we will choose a font family and after we will create some basic variables so we will do these all of basic settings in this section so i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to create project folder you can create your project folder anywhere but i will go to my f drive inside here simply i am going to create new folder and the folder name will sas dash port polio like so now i want to open up this folder in vs code so let me grab this folder and leave it inside vs code like so now i want to create package.json file inside this folder so let me open up the command prompt and i will go to f drive after that cd sas dash port polio like so now i am going to type npm init and we have a question package name by default we have sas dash port polio which is the folder name so depart name is fine just enter and now we have version so just enter description so let's say port polio website with html sas and java script entry point so default is fine just enter 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 author so in my case shakil khan is this okay yes and we have package.json file in this project i want to install sas package locally 
and there is an as in large projects it is a good practice to install npm dependencies locally that's why nothing else if you are happy with sas global package you can use use that package but i will install sas package locally in this project so what we need to do simply go back to command prompt let me add cls npm install sas now i want to install sas package as a development dependency basically i need sas package only and development i don't need sas package and production so that's why we have to install sas package as a development dependency so what we need to do simply we have to add dash capital d so d basically means development dependency just enter just wait a moment now as you can see we have node modules folder inside this folder we have our sas package inside this folder we have our sas package don't worry we will not touch this folder don't worry we will not touch node modules folder but just keep in mind in this folder we have the sas package understand if i go to package.json inside this file we have as you can see we have div dependencies inside here we have sas as you can see we have sas package so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to create some files initially we need three files first of all we need index.html file second we need app.scss file and third we need app.css file so let me create new file and the file name will index.html now i am going to create simple html boilerplate so simply html colon file now press the tab key from the keyboard like so now i want to change this title in this portfolio i will use my print informations and his name is muhammad asif durwani you can add your own name you can use your own name understand so in my case muhammad asif durwani okay and second we have to create app.scss file so new file app.scss so in this file we will have the scss code and third we have to create app.css file so in this file we will have the compiled css code now go to index.html and below the title we have to link app.css file so let me add link app.css now simply go to package.json inside this file i want to create script for sas so let me delete test and we have to add the script name so in my case compile dash sas let me delete this thing and we have to add the sas package name so we have sas after that we have to add the input file name so we have app.scss and now we have to add the output file name so we have app.css so basically i want to compile this file to app.css understand and we don't need the map file so simply we have to add dash dash no 
dash source dash map simply save the file and go to app.scss let me add some basic scss code for example dollar red colon red body background dollar red save the file so simply we have to test we have to test this script so I'll go back to command prompt let me add npm run compile dash sas just press the enter key and sorry one thing more by the way we have to add we have to add dash dash watch plague as well save the file and we have to add npm run compile dash sas yeah go to app.css and we have this compiled code we have this compiled code so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to choose a phone family for our website and i will use poppins font so simply open up your browser and type google fonts click on the first link now simply search for poppins like so basically this one click on this now i am going to choose light 300 select this style regular 400 select this style medium 500 select this style semi bold 600 select this style semi bold not semi bold just bold 700 and now we have extra bold 800 and finally we have black 900 select this style now i am going to copy this link let me copy go to vs code now go to index.html and below this link we have to paste that link like so now inside the main folder i am going to create a new folder and the folder name will scss so inside the scss folder we will have our modules mixins extends loops functions variables etc so inside the scss folder i am going to create another new folder and the folder name wall base inside base i am going to create a module so new file underscore and the module name wall type copy dot scss now inside this file we have to target body selector and go back to the browser let me scroll down and simply i'm going to copy this font family let me copy paste paste that inside body like so and by default we will have font weight 400 like so now simply we have to access this module inside app.scss so what we need to do let me delete this code and we have to add first of all i'm going to add a comment import import base modules so at the rate use single codes or double codes so simply go to scss folder inside there we have base 
after that we have type grapy and we don't need to add the scss extension understand so let me save the file now simply go to command prompt and we have to add npm run sas dash let me check the script name so we have compile dash sas let me add compile dash sas yeah go to app.css and we have this compiled code we have this compiled code so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to set the default line height so the first question is what is line height line height basically specifies the height of a line in other words we could say line height basically add space between inline elements so inside the body i am going to add default line height so below the font weight let me add line height and this will has 1.5 value without any unit so what basically means 1.5 let's say if we have p selector and this has let's say font size 20 pixels now go to index.html let me create p tag and this will has some dummy text so let's say lorem now press the tab key from the keyboard like so again lorem now what will be the line height of this p selector what will be the line height of this p selector the line height of this p selector will be this font size multiplied by this value this font size multiplied by this value let me show you let me open up the calculator so we have font size 20 pixels so let me add 20 multiply by we have 1.5 so 1.5 equal to so we have 30 we have 30 now simply I want to open up the live server like so exactly fine now let me open up the developer tool now simply I'm going to choose p tag like so so simply click on compute it let me scroll down as you can see we have line height 30 pixels we have line height 30 pixels so let's say if I increase if I increase this value let's say poor find file save the file so as you can see between the line we have this large space we have this large space between the lines so this is basically line height so let me add 1.5 for example if we have h1 and this has font size 35 pixels now go to index.html let me add h1 lorem like so so what will be the line height of this h1 so the line height of this h1 will be 35 multiply by 1.5 so let me add here 35 multiply by 1.5 equal to so we have 52.5 so simply go back to the browser let me select h1 and as you can see we have 
line height 52.5 pixels understand so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to set the default font size in this course i will use rem unit instead pixel by the way you can use pixel unit as well but i will use rem unit rem stands for root element and rem unit basically inherit the font size value from the root element and by default one rem is equal to 16 pixels let me show you simply i am going to target p selector and this will has font size one rem so one rem basically means 16 pixels now go to index.html let me create p tag and this will has some dummy text like so now simply go to the browser as you can see we have font size 16 pixels so by default one rem is equal to 16 pixels if i add here two rem so two rem means 32 pixels because by default one rem is equal to 16 pixels so 16 multiply by 2 equal to 32 pixels simply go back to the browser as you can see we have font size 32 pixels so now i want to set the default font size before the body i am going to target html selector inside the html selector i want to set the default font size so let me add font size instead 16 pixels i want to add 10 pixels so now we have default font size 10 pixels understand so this 2 rem basically means 20 pixels because up here we have default font size 10 pixels so 10 multiply by 2 equal to 20 pixels simply go back to the browser as you can see we have font size 20 pixels understand let's say if i need 15 pixels font size then what we will do simply we have to add here 1.5 now let me open up the calculator so simply 1.5 multiply by by default we have 10 pixels font size so simply multiply by 10 equal to 15 we have 15 so so 1.5 rem basically means 15 pixels let me save the file go back to the browser and we have 15 pixels we have 15 pixels so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to convert this 10 pixels to percentage value and basically pixel based units create one issue and the issue is if i go to setting basically i want to change my browser font size manually so let me scroll down as you can see we have font size medium recommended so let's say if i choose very large so we have a very large font size now if i come here as you can see my website has not affected my website has not affected and the reason is pixel based units 
doesn't take effect if we change the browser font size manually so what we need to do simply we have to convert this 10 pixels to percentage value so let me open up the calculator and simply we have to add 10 divide by 16 because by default 1 rem is equal to 16 pixels so simply we have to add 10 divide by 16 equal to now multiply by 100 equal to so we have 62.5 so up here let me add 62.5 percent so 62.5 percent basically means 10 pixels let me add here the formula 10 divided by 16 multiply by 100 understand so let me save the file go back to the browser as you can see we have a very large font size as you can see let's say if I choose very small yeah everything is fine everything is fine so let me choose the medium which is recommended yeah everything is fine so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to set the default margin and padding by default all HTML tags have some margin and padding and I want to reset that margin and padding so what we need to do simply inside the base folder I am going to create a new module so underscore reset dot scss inside this module I want to access all HTML tags so simply we can use the universal selector let me add a static sign curly braces this is universal selector this static sign will select all HTML tags inside the curly braces we can add default margin and padding so let me add margin 0 by default padding 0 now I am going to add box sizing so what basically means box sizing box sizing property allows us to include the padding and border in an elements total width and height nothing else understand and this will has border box value save the file now simply go to app.scss inside this module I want to access reset.scss module so let me add at the rate use single codes or double codes scss slash base slash reset save the file so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to create fave icon instead this globe icon I want to use my own fave icon so simply we have to create fave icon go to this website faveicon.io slash faveicon dash generator this website basically generate fave icons 
from the text so let me scroll down inside this input field we have to type some text so let's say in my case m a so m stands for muhammad and a stands for asif by the way you can add a b c whatever you want but in my case m a and up here we have the preview understand now i am going to choose font family so let me search for popens basically this one after we have font variant so let me choose black 900 and finally we have font size so let's say in my case 70 now i am going to choose font color so basically i will use this color hash 0 5 nine double six nine and finally I am going to choose background color so simply I will use white background so hash if 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 fine now simply we have to download fav icons so click on this button and we have this zip file so simply show an folder let me cut i will go to f drive sas portfolio inside this folder i am going to create new folder and the folder name wall is sets inside a sets i am going to create another new folder fav icons inside fav icons i am going to paste that file now simply we have to unzip this file so extract here now let me delete the zip file like so and also about okay now simply go back to the website scroll down and we have to copy these lines now go to index.html below the title we have to paste those lines now before this path we have to add assets slash fav icons so right here i am going to add assets slash fav icons slash slash this image understand so this image basically means let me show you go to assets fav icons and let me search apple so as you can see we have apple dash touch dash icon dot png so we have few icons for different screens understand now simply i am going to copy a sets slash few icons and paste that right here and also right here and finally right here save the file go back to the browser so as you can see right here we have m a we have m a so friends in a for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to set up colors along with this lecture i have given you a zip file please download that zip file and unzip that file 
so you will see colors file now I am going to open up this file and VS code so as you can see we have different colors first of all we have white color after we have black color and below that we have the list of green colors and finally we have the list of gray colors now inside the scss folder i am going to create new folder and the folder name wall abstracts inside abstracts i am going to create new file and the file name wall underscore colors dot scss now i am going to copy these all colors so control a control c now go to colors dot scss now let me paste all colors like so so simply save the file now go to index.html let me delete let me delete the p tag and go to scss inside there we have base inside base we have type groppy.scss now let me delete this p selector save the file so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question welcome in this section in this section we will create the navigation bar and this is the final navigation bar which we will create in this section so i hope you will enjoy this section so i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to do the new bar html code so go to index.html inside the body first of all i am going to add a comment so simply tag sign explanation mark dash dash and i am going to type start new bar now we have to copy this comment and paste it here and we will have close new bar between the comments i am going to create new tag and this will has a class new inside new we will have another class and the class name will be new underscore underscore wrapper inside new wrapper we will have two childs so first of all we will have new underscore underscore wrapper underscore underscore logo and second we will have ul dot new underscore underscore wrapper underscore underscore ul inside logo we will have anchor tag and this will has a class new underscore underscore wrapper underscore underscore logo underscore underscore brand and we will have we will have asip okay now inside ul we will have li and li will has a class new underscore underscore wrapper underscore underscore ul underscore underscore li inside li we will have anchor tag and anchor tag 
will has a class and the class name will be nav underscore underscore wrapper wrapper underscore underscore ul underscore underscore li underscore underscore a and we will have a title home now i am going to copy this li and paste it four times okay after the home we will have we will have about and third we will have experience and after the experience we will have projects and finally we will have blogs so let me add here blogs okay save the file go to the browser everything is fine so friends you know for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to style this navigation bar so go to vs code inside the scss folder i am going to create new folder and the folder name all components inside the components i am going to create new file and the file name will underscore new dot scss now go to app dot scss file inside this file i am going to access new module so let me add a comment import components module at the rate use single codes or double codes semicolon go to scss folder inside there we have components inside the components we have new module now let me close up inside new module i am going to target new class so let me add here dot new and new will has width 100 percent height 7 rem background so we need dollar white variable let me show you i need dollar white variable because in this variable we have white color so before the name i am going to add at the rate use single codes or double codes semicolon now go one level up so dot dot slash after we have abstracts folder inside there we have colors module and i will not use any namespace so simply we have to remove the namespace so s keyword asterisk sign now let me add dollar white and new bar will has position fixed so position fixed and from the top we will have zero left while zero and finally we will have border bottom one pixel instead pixel i want to use rem unit so let me add here point 0.1 rem so point 0.1 basically means one pixel solid and i need dollar gray 100 variable let me copy paste that here save the file now go back to the browser so as you can see we have this border bottom 
inside nav we have nav wrapper let me show you as you can see we have nav underscore underscore wrapper so let me target this class inside nav dot nav underscore underscore wrapper instead dot nav i am going to add ampersand so ampersand basically means the parent class name which is dot nav so wrapper will has width 100 percent mix width we will have 1200 pixels instead pixels i want to i want to use rem unit so simply we have to add 120 rem so 120 rem basically means 1200 pixels let me show you let me open up the calculator 1200 divided by 10 equal to so we have 120 we have 120 understand and i want to move wrapper to the center i want to move wrapper to the center so simply we can use flex inside the parent class which is new keep in mind inside new we have only one child and that is new wrapper understand so inside the new class i am going to use display flex and we have to use justify content center save the file go back to the browser so as you can see at the center we have navigation bar now inside new wrapper we have two childs we have wrapper logo and wrapper ul so between logo and ul i want to add space so again inside a wrapper we will have display flex justify content space between save the file go back to the browser yeah everything is fine now i want to center vertically these links inside this navigation bar so inside a wrapper I am going to use a line items center save the file go back to the browser yeah everything is fine so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to style these links first of all i want to keep these links in a single line so we have to target nav wrapper ul so go to nav dot scss inside wrapper i am going to add ampersand so ampersand basically means the parent class name which is this one after the wrapper we have underscore underscore ul so let me add underscore underscore ul and we will have display flex save the file go back to the browser so as you can see we have these links in a single line now i want to remove these dots so simply i am going to add list style none save the file go back to the browser so as you can see we don't have dots anymore now below the links we have these lines and i want to remove these lines so simply we have to target anchor links i mean 
these lengths before the lengths we have li so inside ul i am going to add m percent so m percent means the parent class name which is this one so after the ul we have underscore underscore li so let me add underscore underscore li inside li we have anchor tags so let me add m percent so m percent means this thing after the li we have we have underscore underscore a so let me add underscore underscore a and we will have text decoration none text transform capitalize color should be black so dollar black and font size 1.4 rem font weight 500 and let me save the file go back to the browser so we have these links between the links i want to add space so we can use padding so let me add padding left 1.5 rem padding right 1.5 rem save the file go back to the browser now let me show you one thing inside wrapper i am going to add background let's say red save the file go back to the browser so basically i want to remove padding right from this last link i mean from this blogs i want to remove padding right basically this space so we have to target we have to target this last li we have to target this last li so we can use css pseudo class inside li i am going to add m percent so m percent means the parent class name which is this one now let me add colon and the class name is last child last child so last child basically means this last li inside this li we have anchor tag and i want to target this anchor tag so we have to add simply again m percent underscore underscore a and we have to add padding right zero save the file go back to the browser everything is fine so right here we don't have space anymore so let me delete background save the file now this home will has green color so again we have to use pseudo class so right here i am going to add m percent colon first child so first child means this li inside this li we have anchor tag and i want to target this anchor tag so let me add m percent underscore underscore a and we will have color dollar green dash 500 so the file go back to the browser so as you can see we have this green link we have this green link so friends in up for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question 
in this video we are going to style this logo so simply we have to target nav wrapper logo go to nav.scss inside wrapper i am going to add ampersand underscore underscore logo inside logo we have new wrapper logo brand and i want to target this brand class so let me add ampersand after the logo we have underscore underscore brand so let me add underscore underscore brand and we will have text decoration should be none text transform capitalize color should be dollar black and font size 2.5 rem font weight 600 save the file go back to the browser so we have asip after the asip i want to create a dot icon i want to create a dot icon so simply we can use pseudo before or after class so simply brand will has position relative now i am going to add ampersand so ampersand means this class brand now i am going to add colon and we can use pseudo before or after class so let me use after so after means after the brand we can add something we can add something so after will has position absolute i mean after will take position from this brand because brand has position relative now let me add here content so after the brand we can add some contents so let's say hi hi after class so the file go back to the browser so as you can see after the asip we have hi after class after the asip we have hi after class but i don't want to add some contents after the asip so let me add empty codes like so and we will have right position negative so minus 1 rem okay and after we will have bottom position and bottom we will have point 6 rem so point 6 basically means 6 pixels understand after the bottom we will have width so let's say point 8 rem so point 8 means 8 pixels and we will also have height point 8 rem and after that we will have background dollar green dash 500 and border radius 50% save the file go back to the browser so right here we have this dot icon understand and we will also have box shadow so box shadow so we will have horizontal offset 0.2 rem and vertical offset again 
0.2 rem and we will have color so dollar green dash 200 save the file go back to the browser so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to create some mixins because in this file we have some repeated code and we have used flex box many times in this file so i want to create a mixin for flex box after that we will create another mixin for position okay so inside the abstracts i am going to create new file and the file name will underscore mixins dot scss now i am going to create a mixin for flex box so at the rate mixin keyword and the mixin name so let's say flex box and this function will receive two parameters dollar x so dollar x basically means the values of justify content dollar x means the values of justify content and second we will have dollar y so dollar y basically means the values of align items understand inside the mixin we will have display flex and justify content and this will has dollar x so in this variable we will have the values of justify content and finally we will have align items and this will has dollar y save the file now inside nav.scss i want to access mixins module so up here at the rate use single codes or double codes semicolon go one level up we have abstracts inside there we have make sense and i want to remove the name space so sql asterisk sign instead these two lines i want to use i want to use flexbox mixin let me copy and right here at the rate include flex box mixin and first of all we need the justify content value so instead dollar x i am going to pass center value and we don't need align items property so instead dollar y i am going to pass null value so null basically means this will tell to sas compiler please don't create align items property this will tell to sas compiler please don't create align items property so let me delete these two lines save the file go to the browser and we have same output if i go to app.css inside now as you can see we have display flex justify content center and we don't have align items property understand now let me copy this mixin instead these three lines i want to use flex box mixin so let me paste here 
and justify content will has space between value so let me copy paste it here and align items will has center value so instead null I am going to pass center and delete delete these three lines save the file go back to the browser and we have same output we have same output okay now I you want to create another mixin for position so at the rate mixin keyword position and we will receive different parameters first of all we will have dollar name so in this variable we will have the position name after we will have dollar top so in this variable we will have top value after we will have dollar right comma dollar bottom and finally we will have dollar left inside the mixin we will have position and this will has dollar name so in this variable we will have the position name like absolute fixed or relative after we will have top property and this will has dollar top and after we will have right so dollar right bottom colon dollar bottom and finally left so dollar left now I am going to copy this mix in let me scroll up instead of these three lines I want to use the position mix in so at the rate include include position mix in so we have position fixed so inside a name I am going to pass fixed value and we need only top and left value so top we will have zero and we don't need right so let me pass null after we have bottom so we don't need bottom so again null and we need left value so simply zero let me delete these three lines now let me scroll down and inside after again we have position so let me add here at the rate include position makes sense so we have position absolute so right here let me add absolute and we need right position and bottom so top we will have null right so right basically has minus one rem so minus one rem after we have bottom so bottom so in the bottom we have minus sorry not minus point six rem so let me add here point six rem and we don't need left so simply null let me delete this line and these two lines and friends one thing more instead of this single colon we can also use two set up colons we can also use two set up colons understand like so so let me save the file go back to the browser and we have same output we have same output so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video 
we are going to talk about sas forward rule in this file we have accessed two things from abstracts folder we have accessed colors and mixins and i can keep these two modules in a single file and from there we can access these two modules with just single line up code so inside the ab strict folder i am going to create new file and the file name will underscore index instead index you can add abc whatever you want but in my case index dot scss inside this file i want to access colors and mixins module so let me add at the rate instead use i am going to add forward rule so forward single quotes are double quotes semicolon and first of all i want to access colors module and currently we are inside the ab strict's folder so let me add colors like so now friends keep in mind in forward rule basically we don't need to add the namespace right here in forward rule we don't need to add the name space understand and forward rule basically means grab colors module and send back somewhere forward rule means grab colors module and send back somewhere understand now i want to access mixins module as well so at the rate forward single quotes or double quotes semicolon make sense now go to nav.scss and i want to access colors and make sense module so let me delete these two lines and simply we have to access index module because inside index we have colors and make sense so let me add at the rate and use keyword single quotes or double quotes semicolon now go one level up we have abstracts and said there we have index module by the way if i delete index file name our code will still going to work and the reason is if we not specify the index file name in that case sas compiler will look for index file name by default sas compiler look for index file name so that's why i will not specify the index file name if your file name is something else then you should need to specify your file name understand but my file name is index so i will not specify the file name and i want to delete the name space so let me add here sql asterisk sign so the file go back to the browser so we have same output as you can see we have same output so friends in a part this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to assign padding to new wrapper and the reason is inside wrapper we have mix width 
वन ट्वेंटी रेम सो लेट से इफ आई रिसाइज द ब्राउजर विंडो एंड एफ वी है स्क्रीन वेट बिलो ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड पिक्सल्स दैन एज यू कैन सी ब्लॉग्स एंड दिस लोगो डोंट हैव स्पेस फ्राम दि साइड्स सो दिट्स वाई वी हैव टू इसाइन पेडिंग लेफ्ट एंड राइट टू नेव रेपर अंडरस्टेंड सो इन साइड नेव रेपर आई एम गोइंग टू यूज पेडिंग लेफ्ट वन पॉइंट फाइव रेम पेडिंग राइट वन पॉइंट फाइव रेम सेव द फाइल go back to the browser so as you can see we have little bit space from the sides understand now i you want to keep this value in a variable so inside ab structs i am going to create new file underscore variables dot scss now simply i am going to create a variable for example dollar gutter colon and this will has 1.5 rem value now we have to bring this file inside index.scss so let me add at the rate forward and i you want to access variables like so save the file now go to nav.scss instead of this value i am going to use dollar gutter variable let me add here as well gutter save the file go back to the browser and we have same output now i you want to keep mix width in a variable because we will use this value couple of times understand so inside variables i am going to create a variable dollar mix width 120 rem now instead this value i am going to use mix width variable save the file go back to the browser and we have same output we have same output so friends in up for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question welcome in this section in this section we will create responsive grid system look like this and we will have columns look like this same like bootstrap library columns and this is the main section of this course and i hope you will enjoy this section so i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to create the container class the container class will wrap our all website contents and it will has a specific width so inside the scss folder i am going to create new folder and the folder name will layout inside layout i am going to create new file underscore grid dot scss inside this file i am going to create the container class and this will has width 100 percent and max width 120 rem so simply i am going to access 
I am going to access mix width variable. So what we need to do simply we have to bring in index dot scss module. So at the rate use go one level up we have abstracts okay now i want to delete the name space so sql asterisk sign and simply dollar mix wet and we will have padding left and simply i am going to access this variable dollar gutter so dollar gutter padding right dollar gutter so the file now we have to bring this file inside app dot scss so let me add here a comment import layout modules at the rate use go to scss folder inside there we have layout and finally we have grid let me save the file now simply go to index.html and i want to use the container class so simply container let me add some dummy contents like so okay now simply go to the browser so a uh, friends as you can see we don't have any contents and the reason is uh, this navigation bar has fixed position so uh, that's why behind this navigation bar we have we have the container and i want to show the container so what we need to do simply we have to use margin top inside the container so simply i am going to use inline css style equal to double quotes margin top let's say 10 rem save the file yeah everything is fine now i want to move container to the center so what we need to do go to grid dot scss now let me use margin left auto margin right auto save the file go back to the browser so as you can see at the center we have container we have container so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about rows and columns in this diagram as you can see we have rows and columns this horizontal line is a row this horizontal line is a row inside this row we have 12 columns 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so keep in mind in a single row maximum we will have 12 columns and don't worry we can also take up two columns three columns four columns and so on but maximum we can take up 12 columns understand in the second row we have six columns and each column has size two so these columns will cover 100% wet because each column has size 2 so 2 plus 2 equal to 4 plus 2 equal to 6 8 10 12 understand in the third row we have four columns and each column has size 3 so 3 plus 3 equal to 6 9 
12 understand so friends end up for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to talk about CSS media queries with the help of media queries we can create responsive websites and media queries we can target different devices like desktops laptops tablets and mobile phones now to use media query first of all i am going to type at the rate media keyword space parentheses and curly braces inside the parentheses we can use max width or min width for now i am going to use min width colon 1200 pixels so min width basically means if we have the screen width above 1200 pixels min width means if we have the screen width above 1200 pixels then run code inside these two curly braces inside the curly braces we can target css classes or selectors so uh, let's say i am going to target body selector if we have the screen width above 1200 pixels then body will has background green save the file go to the browser so as you can see we have green background now let me do inspect now i am going to click on this mobile icon now up here as you can see we have screen width 1359 so that's why we have green background let's say if we have screen width below 1200 let me show you just see if we have below as you can see we have just white background we have just white background for example if we have another media query so again i am going to type at the rate media keyword parentheses curly braces inside the parentheses i am going to use max width colon 1200 px so max width basically means if the screen width is equal to 1200 or below 1200 max width means if the screen width is equal to 1200 pixels or below 1200 pixels then run code inside these two curly braces so again i am going to target body selector and body will has background orange save the file go back to the browser and we have orange background so if we have about 1200 then as you can see we have orange not orange we have green background if we have 1200 are below 1200 as you can see we have orange background understand now friends keep in mind this media query run between 1200 and 0 this media query run between 1200 and 0 let me show you if we have a very small screen as you can see we have just 78 and still we have orange background for example between 1200 and 0 if we have another media query let me show you at the rate 
मीडिया पेरेंथिसेस करली ब्रेसेस Inside the parentheses, I am going to use mix dash width colon nine nine two px. Inside the media query, we will have body, background, indigo, indigo. Now this media query will run between twelve hundred and nine nine three let me show you let me add a comment this media query will run between twelve hundred and nine nine three px after the nine nine three this media query will run inside this media query we have mix width nine nine two so here mix width means if the screen width is equal to 992 or below 992 then run this code now this media query will run between 992 and 0 so let me add a comment 992 px and 0 save the file Simply go to the browser. As you can see, we have indigo background. So if we have above nine nine two, above nine nine two, as you can see, we have orange. If we have above twelve hundred, then we will have green like so. Understand? so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to create columns for extra large screens extra large basically means if we have screen width above 1200 pixels then we will have 12 columns and those columns will run only on extra large screens first of all i want to show you the structure of extra large columns inside the html file i am going to delete the dummy text inside the container we will have row class inside row we will have columns for extra large screens we will have columns look like dot call dash xlg xlg means extra large xlg means extra large after we will have dash 1 2 3 4 up to 12 because in a single row maximum we will have 12 columns understand so now we have to create 12 columns for extra large screens so go to grid.scss and i am going to delete the media queries before the columns we will have row class so let me create row inside row we will have display flex and after we will have flex wrap and this will has wrap value so wrap basically means if we don't have free available space in a row then it will move the rest of columns to the next row understand now if we have screen width above 1200 pixels then we have to create 12 columns for extra large screens so we can use media query so let me add at the rate media parentheses curly braces inside the parentheses i am going to add men width colon 1200 pixels 
Now friends keep in mind in media queries I will use pixel unit and the reason is rem based media queries doesn't work with all browsers so that's why in media queries I will use pixel unit understand and here min width means if we have screen width above 1200 pixels then run code inside these two curly braces inside the curly braces I am going to create 12 columns so we can use SCSS for loop let me add at the rate for keyword dollar i variable instead dollar i you can add dollar a dollar b dollar c whatever you want but in my case dollar i this variable will increment in each iteration understand after we will have from keyword so loop will start from one after we will have through keyword and it will go up to 12 understand inside the loop I want to create 12 classes so let me add here dot call dash xlg xlg means extra large dash after the dash I want to append dollar i variable because this variable will increment in each iteration in the first iteration this will has one value in the second iteration this will has two value in the third iteration this will has three value and so on so after the dash i want to append this variable so let me add here hash curly braces inside the curly braces I am going to add dollar i now curly braces inside the curly braces I am going to add flex bases as a width ok and here we will do little bit calculation so up here I am going to access math module from SAS so at the rate use single codes or double codes semicolon sas colon math and right here I am going to access math module from math I want to access due method so due basically means division so I want to divide 100% on 12 because maximum we will have 12 columns and multiply by dollar i basically this thing and we will also have max width let me copy this thing paste it here save the file now go to app.css as you can see inside this media query we have 12 classes we have 12 classes and these classes will run only on extra large screens I mean if we have screen width above 1200 pixels then these classes will run understand so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to use extra large columns in the HTML file if we have screen width above 1200 pixels then I want to display four columns per row inside row I am going to add dot call dash xlg dash 3 so each column 
will has size 3 inside the column we will have h1 call 3 now I am going to copy this column and paste it three times now friends as you can see each column has size 3 so 3 plus 3 equal to 6 plus 3 equal to 9 plus 3 equal to 12 so these columns will cover 100% width now simply go to the browser so as you can see in this row we have four columns now let me do inspect now I am going to click on this mobile icon and we have screen width 1231 so if we have screen width below 1200 then these columns will not going to work if we have above then these columns will work and the reason is inside this media query we have main width 1200 so if we have screen width above 1200 then these classes will run understand so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to create columns for large screens large screens basically means if the screen width is equal to 1200 or below 1200 then we will have 12 columns and those columns will run only on large screens so simply I am going to copy this media query paste it here now friends keep in mind this is not an efficient way to create columns for different screens later in this section I will show you an efficient way to create columns for different screens and right now if I start that efficient way then you will not understand the logic so that's why I will show you that efficient way later in this section now I am going to add a comment for this media query let me add here xlg will run about 1200 px ok now inside this media query instead main width I am going to use max width 1200 so max width basically means if the screen width is equal to 1200 or below 1200 then run this code inside the loop instead of xlg I am going to use just lg so lg means large lg means large and this media query will run between 1200 and 0 let me add a comment lg will run between 1200 and 0 let me save the file go to app.css as you can see we have another media query inside this media query we have large classes we have classes for large screens now go to index.html if we have screen width is equal to 1200 or below 1200 then I want to display three columns per row so inside this class I am going to add call dash lg dash and each column will has size 4 now let me copy this class paste it here here and here save the file go back to the browser 
so now if we have screen where 1200 are below 1200 then as you can see we have three columns per row if we have a very small screen so as you can see still we have three columns per row if we have about 1200 then we will have four columns as you can see as you can see so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to create columns for medium screens medium screens basically means if the screen width is equal to 992 or below 992 then we will have 12 columns and those columns will run only on medium screens so again I am going to copy this media query and paste it here inside this media query instead 1200 pixels I am going to use 992px so here max width means if the screen width is equal to 992 or below 992 then run this code inside this loop instead lg I am going to use md so md means medium md means medium understand now friends now this media query will run between 1200 and 993 so let me add here 993 px because after the 993 this media query will run after the 993 this media query will run understand and this media query will run between 992 and 0 so let me add a comment md this will run between 992 px and 0 save the file go to app.css as you can see inside this media query we have 12 columns for medium screens we have 12 columns for medium screens now if i go to the browser if we have screen width below 993 as you can see still large columns works still large columns works and the reason is we have medium columns we have columns for medium screens but we have not used yet medium columns inside the html file understand so now let's say if we have medium screens then i you want to display two columns per row so inside this class i am going to add call dash md dash six let me copy this class paste it here here and here save the file now go to the browser so now as you can see we have screen width below 993 so that's why per row we have two columns per row we have two columns if we have above 993 so as you can see we have three columns per row if we have above 1200 then we will have four columns yeah everything is fine everything is fine so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video 
we are going to create columns for small screens and extra small screens small screens basically means if the screen width is equal to 768 or below 768 then we will have 12 columns and those columns will run only on small screens so simply i am going to copy this media query and paste it here inside this media query instead 992 we will have 768px so uh, here max width means if the screen width is equal to 768 or below 768 then run this code inside this loop instead md i am going to add sm so sm means small sm means small now friends this media query will run between 992 and and 769px because after the 769 this media query will run understand now i want to create columns for extra small screens as well so extra small means if the screen width is equal to 480 or below 480 so let me copy this media query paste it here and we will have max width 480 inside this loop instead sm i am going to add x sm so x sm means extra small understand now this media query will run let me add a comment sm will run between 768px let me copy paste it here dash and after we have 480 so let me add here 481px after the 481 this media query will run now here i am going to add a comment xsm this will run between 480 px and 0 let me save the file go to app.css as you can see we have classes for small screens and finally we have classes for extra small screens now simply go to index.html if we have screen width 768 or below 768 then i want to display one column per row so inside this class i am going to add call dash sm dash 12 let me copy the class name paste it here here and here save the file now friends if we have extra small screens then again i want to display one column per row so inside the html i will not specify extra small columns and the reason is if we not add columns for extra small screens then this class will run between 768 and 0 this class will run between 768 and 0 so uh, that's why i will not use columns for extra small screens simply go to the browser if we have below 
seven sixty eight. As you can see, we have just one column per row. If we have above seven sixty eight, we have two columns. If we have above nine nine two, then we have three columns. If we have above twelve hundred, then we have four columns. We have four columns. So, friends, enough for this video. Still, if you have any issue in this video. you can ask the question in this video we are going to create columns for all screens using an efficient way as you can see in this code we have lots of repeated code we have media queries repeated many times and also we have for loop repeated many times so instead this code i want to use an efficient way to create columns for all screens so i want to create a map inside that map we will define all brick points brick points basically means this is a brick point because this number brick our page styles so inside that map we will define all brick points and after that we will loop that map understand so go to variables dot css and simply i am going to create a map so dollar Break points colon parentheses inside the parentheses we will have key value pairs. Understand? First of all, we will have x l g. For x l g, we have min width twelve hundred p x. After we have l g. For LG, we have max width again twelve hundred pixels, and after we have MD. For MD, we have max width nine nine two px. After we have SM. For SM, we have max width seven sixty eight pixels, and finally we have XSM. and this will has 480 pixels now i am going to add comments for all brick points first of all we have xlg let me add xlg so xlg will run about 1200 pixels after we have lg so let me add lg lg will run between 1200 and 993 px after we have md so let me add md md will run between 992 992 px and 7 69 pixels after the md we have sm let me add sm this will run between 768 pixels and 481 pixels and finally we have xsm this will run between 480 pixels and zero save the file so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in the next video we will loop this map in this video we are going to loop brick points map and i will use each loop 
go to grade.scss inside this file we have already accessed index module from abstracts so now we can easily access breakpoints inside this file so right here I am going to add at the rate each keyword and I want to loop dollar brick points curly braces from this map I want to access keys and values so before dollar brick points I am going to add dollar key instead dollar key you can add dollar a dollar b dollar c whatever you want but in my case dollar key comma dollar value so instead value you can add anything now I am going to add n keyword so dollar key will hold all keys dollar key will hold all keys I mean these are keys and dollar value will hold all values so I mean these are values inside the loop I am going to check dollar key so let me add here at the rate f dollar key basically I want to check f dollar key is equal to xlg then I will use min width in the media query f dollar key is equal to xlg then I will use min width in the media query and in the rest of media queries I will use mix width and as you can see in this media query we have min width and in the rest of media queries we have mix width as you can see we have mix width so let me add here f key is equal to xlg then we will have a media query so at the rate media min width min width will equal to 1200 so I can access 1200 from dollar value so let me add here dollar value and we will have for loop so let me copy this loop paste it here now instead xlg xlg I am going to append dollar key because with the help of dollar key we can access this thing understand so let me add here hash curly braces dollar key now go to else so at the rate else and we will have at the rate media mix dash width colon dollar value and again we will have this loop let me copy paste it here now I am going to delete these media queries save the file now if I go to app.css let me scroll down as you can see we have min width 1200 and we have columns for extra large screens after we have media query 
inside this media query we have max weight 1200 and we have columns for large screens so we have same output we have same output now simply go to the browser now as you can see we have same output we have same output so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to create a mixin for this loop because we have for loop two times in this code so I want to create a mixin for this loop go to mixins.scss and I am going to create a mixin so at the rate mixin keyword and the mixin name so let's say columns parentheses curly braces now I am going to cut this loop from here paste it inside the mixin okay now inside this mixin we need the math module so simply I am going to cut math from here and paste it up here second we need dollar key so this mixin will receive only one parameter and that should be dollar key let me save the file now inside this media query I am going to add at the rate include and we have columns mixing and I am going to pass dollar key now let me copy this mixing and I am going to delete this loop and paste that mixin basically columns mixin so save the file go back to the browser and we have same output we have same output so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question welcome in this section in this section we will create the response your new bar for mobile screens look like this if we have the mobile screen then we will have new bar look like this so friends I hope you will enjoy this section so I will see you in the next video now that we have already learned media queries now it's time to make this new bar responsive and again we will use media queries let's say on the mobile screen if I want to modify the styles of this new class or wrapper class or brand class then simply we have to use media queries and keep in mind one thing in SAS or SCSS we can nest media queries in CSS classes let's say on the mobile screen if I want to modify the styles of this UL so inside this body I can write media query for this UL so after the list style I am going to add at the rate media mix 
or main width so let's say 768 px and i want to change the color of this ul so let me add here background orange save the file go back to the browser so if we have mix width 768 as you can see ul has orange background ul has orange background so in sas or scss we can nest media queries and css classes so friends enough for this video in the next video we will create a mixing for media queries in this video we are going to create a mixing for media queries inside that mixing we will have different media queries and after we will reuse that mixing throughout our files so go to mixins dot scss and i am going to create a new mixin so at the rate mixin keyword and the mixin name so let's say responsio parenthesis curly braces this mixin will receive only one parameter so let's say dollar screen in this variable we will have different values like lg md sm or xsm now friends keep in mind inside this mixin we will have media query for large screens medium screens small screens and extra small screens and for extra large this layout is fine for extra large this layout is fine understand now i am going to check this variable f dollar screen has lg value then we will have a media query for large screens so let me add here at the rate f dollar screen equal to lg then we will have a media query so at the rate media parenthesis mix width colon 1200 px curly braces now i want to access this value from from this map so what we need to do simply inside make sense we have to access variables so let me scroll up and i am going to access variables so at the rate use and variables s keyword asterisk sign now friends you may ask a question why we not access variables from index module so let's say instead variables if i add here index save the file go back to the browser so as you can see we have this error module loop this module is already being loaded so if i go to index dot scss inside this file we have already make sense and variables so that's why we have this error now to solve this error so instead 
and instead index I am going to access variables like so save the file go back to the browser so as you can see we don't have any error now let me delete this 1200 now from from this map I want to access I want to access this value so what we need to do simply we have to use a function and the function name is map dash get and first of all we have to add the map name so we have dollar brick points and I want to access this value so after the brick points we have to add the key name so let me add here single codes or double codes and we have LG because LG has 1200 value so let me add here LG understand and inside this media query we will have the CSS code understand now after this F we will have at the rate else if dollar screen equal to md then again we will have a media query let me copy paste it here now i want to access i want to access this value 992 so simply right here I am going to add MD because MD has MD has 992 value understand now again we will have else if dollar screen equal to SM then let me copy this media query paste it here now we will have SM because this key has this value so let me add here SM and again else if dollar screen equal to XSM now we will have media query now I want to access 480 so let me add here xsm because because this key has this value understand so let me save the file in the next video i will show you how we can access the css code inside these media queries and I will also show you how we can use this mixin. Understand? So enough for this video. Still, if you have any issue in this video, you can ask the question. In this video, we are going to use Responsio mixin inside nav.scss first of all let me correct this value instead s x m we will have x s m understand now go to nav dot scss if we have mobile screen then i want to modify the styles of this ul so let me delete this media query and i am going to use responsio mixin so at the rate include responsio and i am going to pass sm value so if we pass sm value then this condition will run 
inside this condition we have media query for small screens understand after the parenthesis i am going to add curly braces and friends i know these curly braces very very strange to you but after the parenthesis we can also use curly braces like so inside these curly braces we can pass css code and to mix in understand inside these curly braces we can pass css code and to this mix in understand so simply if we have mobile screen then i you want to modify the styles of this ul so on the mobile screen ul will has position fixed so for position i you want to use mixin let me copy this mixin let me add here at the red include position and name we will have fixed from the top we will have zero right while zero bottom position while zero and left will also zero understand after that we will have width 100% height 100% and background we will have dollar green dash file 100 understand now let me save the file go back to the browser and we have this issue mixin does does not accept a content block now i you want to access this css code inside 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 this media query so what we need to do inside the media query i am going to add here at the red content content so friends this css code will come into at the red content understand this css code will come into at the red content understand now simply i am going to copy at the red content paste it here here and here save the file go back to the browser now let me resize the browser window so as you can see we have green background and ul has covered the complete width and height now i you want to show back the logo on mobile screen and now basically has height 7 rem so what we need to do go to now dot css now let me change the top position let me add here 7 rem save the file go back to the browser yeah exactly fine exactly fine now friends ul basically has display flex and right now these links are placed in a row on mobile screen i you want to place these links in column direction so what we need to do after background i am going to add flex 
direction column yeah everything is fine now from the top let me add little bit space so padding top file rem save the file yeah cool perfect so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to work on these links and keep in mind to this mixin we have passed sm value so this media query will run between 768 pixels and 0 the reason is after this mixin we have not used mixin for extra small screens so uh, that's why this media query will run between 768 pixels and 0 now go to nav.scss let me scroll down inside this class i am going to add at the red include responsio sm curly braces if we have the mobile screen then we will have padding top one rem padding bottom again one rem so the file go back to the browser now friends as you can see padding top and bottom doesn't work and the reason is hyperlink is a inline element first of all we have to make hyperlinks block elements so inside this mixin i am going to add display block save the file go back to the browser and as you can see we have little bit space between the links and we will have color dollar white now friends before the about we have home link but we don't see the home link and the reason is home link has green color so let me scroll down inside first child i am going to add at the rate include responsio sm on the mobile screen we will have color dollar black save the file go back to the browser and we have black home now friends on the mobile screen i you want to increase this space little bit i mean i you want to increase padding left and right little bit so what we need to do simply i am going to copy these two lines paste them here and one thing more instead of 1.5 i am going to add dollar gutter because in this variable we have 1.5 value understand and here also i am going to add dollar gutter let me copy paste it here and here but if we have the mobile screen then we will have padding left dollar gutter plus 1 rem so friends in this variable we have 1.5 value so 1.5 rem plus 1 rem equal to 2.5 rem 
understand and here also we will have plus one RAM save the file now go back to the browser yeah everything is fine now I you want to move this logo also little bit to the right side so let me scroll up inside the wrapper I am going to add at the rate include responsio sm curly braces and I am going to copy these two lines let me copy paste them here and we will have gutter plus one rim and here also plus one rim save the file go back to the browser yeah fine now on these links I want to add hover effect so let me scroll down inside this mixin I am going to add ampersand and colon hover and the hover effect we will have background dollar white color should be dollar black and I want to increase padding left little bit on the hover effect so padding left dollar gutter plus 2 rem save the file go back to the browser yeah everything is fine now I you want to add a little bit transition on the hover effect so inside this class I am going to add transition and I you want to animate background color and padding left so we have three properties if we have more than one properties then we can use here all so all basically means these three properties after I am going to add the transition time so let's say 0 0.5 s so 0 0.5 basically means half second 0 0.5 s means half second and finally I am going to add linear so linear basically means the transition will be smooth let me save the file go back to the browser yeah very very cool perfect so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to display a toggle icon on the right side of this nav bar with the help of that icon we will open and close this nav bar and for icons I will use the bootstrap icons by the way you can use font awesome or something else but in this course I will use the bootstrap icons simply go to get bootstrap.com and click on icons now I am going to click on install and we have different options we can install bootstrap icons through npm or we can download the bootstrap icons or we can use the cdn in this course I will use the cdn simply I am going to copy this link let me copy go to index.html 
and above this head I am going to paste that link now we can use the bootstrap icons so let's say I am going to search for justify and you can use this icon or this icon or this icon let's say I want to use justify right simply I am going to click on this icon and we have different options we can download the SVG image or we can use this I tag or we can use the SVG tag and I am going to use this I tag let me copy go to index.html inside the new wrapper I am going to create a class right here new underscore underscore wrapper underscore underscore toggle and let me paste that tag like so now go to the browser and as you can see we have that icon understand now I want to show this icon only on mobile screens so go to nav.scss inside nav wrapper I am going to add right here I am going to add ampersand underscore underscore toggle so toggle basically means means this toggle initially this will has display none save the file go back to the browser so as you can see we don't have that icon anymore now I want to show that icon again on the mobile screens understand so inside this toggle I am going to add at the rate include responsio sm and we will have display block or flex save the file go back to the browser as you can see we have that icon on mobile screen understand now instead of this flex I am going to use the flex box mixing let me copy and let me delete this line at the rate include flex box mixing and we will have center here also center save the file and toggle will has width 3 rem height 3 rem ok and we will have background dollar green dash 500 border radius 0.4 rem save the file yeah everything is fine now I you want to target this icon so we have I tag inside toggle right here let me add here just I and we can also target above above this mixin so above the mixin I am going to target I and I will has color dollar white yeah fine and we will have font size 2.1 rem save the file yeah cool perfect and this uh, toggle 
well also has a little bit border so instead border i am going to use outline and we will have 0.3 rem solid dollar green dash 200 save the file yeah cool perfect and toggle will has cursor pointer save the file go back to the browser if we have large screen then we don't have that icon if we have the mobile screen then we have the toggle icon so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to hide or show these links if someone click on this toggle icon to do this we need little bit javascript and initially these links should be hide so go to new.scss inside this mixin i'm going to add transform scale zero scale zero basically means completely hide this ul scale zero means completely hide this ul on mobile screens understand so let me save the file go back to the browser as you can see we don't have those links anymore now i want to show back those links if we click again on this toggle icon to do this we need little bit javascript so inside the main directory i am going to create a new file and the file name will app.js now go to index.html above this body i am going to link app.js so we will have script src equal to double codes or single codes inside the single codes we have to add the path of this file so we have app.js now inside app.js i am going to target this element and basically we will check if someone clicked on this icon then we will show back those links so that's why inside app.js we have to target this element understand so this element has new wrapper toggle class so go to app.js inside this file first of all i am going to create a variable before the variable i am going to add const instead const you can add let r var but in my case const after the const we will have the variable name so let's say in my case toggle instead toggle you can add a b c whatever you want but in my case toggle equal to and i you want to target this class so in javascript we have document dot query selector and this is should be capital inside the parenthesis i am going to add double quotes or single quotes 
inside the single codes I am going to target this class let me copy uh, before the class I am going to add dot so dot basically means class and we have name wrapper toggle class if I do console dot log toggle save the file go back to the browser now if I do inspect console so as you can see we have this element and this element has nav wrapper toggle class understand now on this element I want to add click event so let me delete this console I am going to add a comment add click event on toggle so let me add here toggle so toggle basically means this toggle dot add event listener so I you want to listen for click event so let me add here double quotes or single quotes inside the single quotes I am going to add click event so click basically means if someone click on this element then we will have a function and this function will run so let's say alert hello toggle save the file go back to the browser if I click on this icon so we have hello toggle again we have hello toggle so friends enough for this video in the next video we will show back those links if we click on this toggle icon understand so I will see you in the next video in this video we are going to toggle a class toggle a means add or remove a class so we will have a class and we will toggle that class as we click on this icon so go to nav.scss inside dot nav we will have a class and the class name wall dot nav underscore underscore actio instead dot nav I am going to add ampersand like so now friends keep in mind this class will be visible only on mobile screens so what we need to do simply we have to wrap this class in a media query so up here let me add at the rate include responsive sm curly braces now let me cut this code paste them here inside this class we will have transform scale 1 so scale 1 basically means I want to show back this UL as we click on this icon scale 1 means I want to show back this UL understand so let me save the file now inside app.js I am going to target I am going to target UL element and this element has nav wrapper UL class so first of all I am going to add const UL variable equal to document dot query selector single quotes or double quotes dot 
so dot means class and we have we have this class let me copy paste it here now inside this arrow function let me delete the alert and i am going to target ul element so simply ul dot we will have class last dot toggle so i you want to toggle i you want to toggle let me show you i you want to toggle this class new underscore underscore active so let me add here new underscore underscore active so friends class list basically means this will gives us the list of classes of this element so right now we have only one class and that is new wrapper ul and toggle will check this class and this list so if we have new active class and this list then toggle will remove this class from this list if we don't have this class and this list then toggle will add this class and this list understand so let me save the file go back to the browser if i click yeah yeah fine now let me do inspect and let me let me target let me target the ul so as you can see right here we have ul we have ul so and right now we have new underscore underscore active class so if i click on this icon so that class has been removed if i click again so again we have new underscore underscore active class understand so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question in this video we are going to add a little bit transitions to this new bar at the time of opening right now this new bar don't have any transitions at the time of opening so go to new dot scss inside this mixing i am going to add border radius 50 percent and if we have this class then we will have border radius zero now i you want to animate transform and border radius so let me scroll up inside this mixing i am going to add transition and we have more than one properties so let me add here all and after we will have the transition time so let's say point 3s and finally i am going to add linear instead linear we can add is n so is n means transition with slow start if i add here is out is out means transition with slow end if i add here is in out so is in out means transition with slow start and end so let me save the file go back to the browser yeah cool perfect now friends i want to change 
the transform origin as you can see by default transform has center origin so i want to change the origin position so inside this mixing i am going to add transform origin and we can pass horizontal and vertical value so i want to move the transform origin horizontally 100% and vertically 50% like so save the file yeah cool perfect cool perfect so friends enough for this video still if you have any issue in this video you can ask the question